Well, uh, hi, Samay. Thank you so much for helping me in my project. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, well, um, I'm 16 and I'm a freshman. Um, uh, I play a few sports, but I don't do that much, honestly. But yeah. But uh, you were on the robotics team. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, we work on, we usually, we get assigned a challenge in the summer and we work on building our robots and programming them using certain software that's given to us. And over the competition season, we refine our robots in certain challenges and we improve them. Yeah. And I remember you working on like a laser range finder at some point. Oh, um, we, yeah, we used a scan, we were trying, we were attempting using a scanner to um, scan our field so the robot could attempt to work autonomously to complete the challenge, depending on the certain obstacles that um, it may face, but yeah. And uh, you live in New Hampshire? And during the Democratic primaries, you got to interview Vice President uh, Joe Biden. Yes. Um, yeah, my work with the Biden campaign has been really great. Um, currently, I'm one of the few co-chairs of the high school Democrats for Joe Biden. And I'm also another co-chair for the Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders for Joe Biden. Um, and I get to do a lot of work and communicate with media officials and campaign surrogates and even on um, the vice, former vice president himself. Um, and I get to do remote groundwork. And if it weren't for COVID-19, I'd be in Washington this summer. But, oh, wow. Yeah, this would have been an exciting summer to be there. I know. It's fine. Um, <laughs> so I've read a lot on Joe Biden's positions and other things that he does. The one thing that I have no idea on what his position is on, and I can't find any information about it, is what he thinks about space exploration and NASA and that type of thing. It's, it's like, there's like no information to say what his thoughts are in that area. And as, do you have any insight? Honestly, I don't know that much about his policies regarding space and that stuff, but I do believe he's a supporter of um, increased research and funding maybe for NASA. And I do believe that under the Obama administration, they were passionate and made it one of their many priorities to um, increase research and try to um, well, you know, um, increase funding and improve on everything that they have to increase the United States potential in space. But I don't know as much as I should. <laughs> well, um, if, if you ever get a chance to ask, maybe you can, can sure. find out for me. I should have. If you asked me yesterday, I would have, before yesterday, um, I would have been able to ask him. I have, I don't know when the next time we'll be speaking to him, but next time I'll, I'll definitely write it down after this and try to get your question conveyed. The current vice president, uh, Vice President Mike Pence, uh, he is the head of the National Space Council. And last year uh, in like February, he announced that the current administration plans to land uh, the first woman and the next man on the moon in 2024, which would be within the term of the next president uh, cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess, first of all, uh, did you know that uh, what NASA's current plans are in relation to human space exploration? Honestly, I am not so familiar with Na NASA's policies. I have heard about that the Trump administration has been do it have having like work and in, increased interest in space and aviation but i'm honestly not sure what the specifics are and what do you think about that about us sending people back to the moon do you think this is a good thing that's going to enable humanity's expansion to the rest of the solar system or do you see it as being 
oh, that's kind of nice or interesting? Or do you see it as being like, oh my gosh, you're spending money on that? What about all these other things we got going on? Like, what's your views? I think that if the, like, if as long as we're not wasting, a, like, an excess of money on this certain issue, um, I think we're fine. I do think it is essential to increase funding for space and NASA because their work is very important because they don't just focus on space. They also you know help with like funding with Earth and they can also help with, with like allocating natural resources. They have they know information regarding that, which is also super important. And I think it's really cool that the Trump administration is putting in a good amount of interest in sending two people to the moon because i think um I'm, as i don't really know as much but i think that the more research we have uh, and information and data collected regarding space um and like it can help with leaps and bounds to who knows maybe in the future potentially beyond our lifetimes um having people settle in uh, I wouldn't maybe not on the moon because I don't think they have they don't really it doesn't have natural resources that I think would aid a civilization but maybe to a another planet like potentially Mars or something. Uh, so it's interesting you say the moon doesn't have natural resources. Um, I heard one person make the observation that there's actually nothing um, there's no such thing as natural resources there's only raw materials and it's human ingenuity applied to those raw materials that turns them into resources. Uh, for example, um, in the 1800s, you would have oil coming out of the earth and it would uh, ruin uh, crop fields and you know it was a nuisance. But then in the 1900s, we learned how to extract that oil, refine it, turn it into gasoline, had engines to burn it in and things like that. And it became a, a highly valued resource that we fought many wars and battles trying to obtain. Um, the same thing's true with like iron and aluminum and uh, just land turning it into agriculture. I was just wondering, what do you think about that perspective? Well, I think in that case, we do need to increase funding um, for NASA and uh, other projects such as that because if we have more like more brilliant minds focused on creating re using resources that the moon and other planets have accessible and turning them into something that can be used to aid us then in that case we should be focusing more on that um have you ever heard of a company called spacex i have yes um what have you heard about them Okay, so I know um, Elon Musk, I believe, is the CEO or head of that. Um, and I, I think I may be wrong, but they've had rockets or and or something like that, and like it's like gone out to space, and like I think it's like came back and like to a certain place or something. I don't know if I'm saying that properly, but I th also I know that they're a private company that. I do believe um, they've sent, they recently sent a few people to, um, I think it was the International Space Station, but I may be wrong. No, you're right. But I feel for a private company, they've gone really far. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things to keep in mind, why is space so expensive? Is that we build rockets and we use them one time and we throw them away. Right. But what SpaceX has done is you know the the SpaceX rocket that they have the Falcon 9 has the first stage, that's the bigger part, and it has a little second stage, and then it has the satellites on top with like a payload fairing, and what they've been able to do is that first stage they've been able to get it to take the rocket up, and then after it does its job it comes back and lands, and they're able to reuse it, so they don't have to build a new one every single time, and they've reused the same first stage for like five times. So, so there's that, but they're, they're working on a huge 100% reusable rocket that could carry 100 people into space at a time. 
and would actually be cheaper than even that Falcon 9 because all they have to do is pay for fuel. Uh, because even the Falcon 9, they lose that second stage, which is uh, mm -hmm. costs many millions of dollars to build. But uh, that rocket that they used to launch two astronauts to the International Space Station, you and I could actually buy tickets on that rocket today. It just, uh, we need $55 million. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll get a lottery ticket. And that's that's a, a possibility. Um, or we have to come up with some business, uh, you know, some invention, something like that. For sure, for sure. Um, but SpaceX is also deploying, uh, I think it's like over 10,000 satellites in low Earth orbit around the Earth that will provide high speed internet access to any place on the Earth. Um, and you know, it's just going to be kind of amazing. But Elon's big vision is to build a city on Mars and have it completely self-contained with a million people by 2050. And I was wondering what you thought about that goal. Um, 2050, I, I think it's a great um, task that, that he is um, setting himself at completing. I think 2050 seems personally to me ambitious, but who knows what other technologies SpaceX is working on that they haven't announced yet to the public. Um, I think if we can get people to successfully live on Mars and like have like live life, what would be normally, um, and if he's saying a million people, I think by 20, that would just be great. Um, it, it would, it would just be great. Yeah. Um, it would like, just open up new doors to completely like having a civilization on a different planet. And I guess, although the, right now the problem at hand and the task that should be focused on, I believe is like conserving the resources um, that we have on earth. Um, I think that would be great if we were successfully able to have a civilization on a different planet. Uh, what do you think we would get out of it? Honestly, I think that the only way I see moving to a different planet being productive is that if we've completely drained almost all of the resources out of Earth, um, I think the, the only thing that we would be getting out of it is kind of a last resort ticket to just get out of here on earth and i think it's cool but right now i don't know how productive it would be but yeah that's how i feel but i consider this whole COVID 19 thing i'm not sure what it's like for you in new hampshire you know we were talking about how uh it's kind of boring because you're kind of stuck at home so i assume you're locked down in your house like we're locked down is mm -hmm. that right I am, yeah. I do go out on a run or maybe a bike ride every day, um, obviously maintaining social distancing. But yeah, I do. My family, we usually stay at home most of the day just to stay safe. Although um, in New Hampshire, I think per capita, it isn't as bad as most other states. Um, I was looking at the curve, though, and the curve isn't really getting flat. Um, it's day, but it is at a relatively low level compared to maybe I'd say earlier in the month or last month. Yeah, in the county where I am on Friday, they said, um, you know, it's like condition red, the worst case, uncontrolled. Uh, the curve is going straight back up. We're having record things, so things aren't good here. That's unfortunate. Yeah. I guess that would, that's what happens when you have so many people. <laughs> but you know, the thing is here on Earth, we're so interconnected, right? So even a, a disease in like Oregon, they're mm -hmm. connected to people who are connected to people who are connected to people who are connected to us and the rest of the world. Now, can you imagine being a society on Mars and knowing that 
you're not going to have new people here for two more years. So there might be this outbreak on Earth, but you're 100% safe where you are from the COVID-19. You have other things you're worried about. You're worried about not having air to breathe, not having water to drink, not having uh, food to eat. You're worried about the radiation. You're worried about your fellow Martians going crazy. Um, you're worried about asteroid impacts. Um, you know, you're worried about all these things, but you're not worried about COVID because you're completely separated from the people on Earth. I was just wondering. But then at the same time, um, Im imagine if some new outbreak from, from Mars happened, I'd say the whole the majority of that population there would be screwed. It, like, depending if they have measures in place in case something like that happens, but they wouldn't have access to all these labs and facilities to produce a vaccine. Although they would be isolated from the people on Earth, they'd all be in a lot of trouble. They, they would be. No, that's true. But um, have you heard the phrase, uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket? Right, yes, yeah. And what do you think about that? I, I agree with that statement, yeah. Um, I think you could also interpret that as earth being a basket um which you're so we were, we're seeing happening since like our natural resources are being drained um with the whole, with obviously an increasing population and an ever increasing demand for more resources eventually we'll get to the point where the politicians and scientists are going to say we have a big problem <laughs> You know, and I think that's why it is important to try to settle and colonize potentially on a different planet in the future. But I, I don't, I don't foresee that being a problem in very soon. I think it'll be a while before we really have that discussion. But other than running our resources on Earth. Do you see any reason to go and colonize the, the rest of the solar system uh, just for doing it in and of itself? Um, honestly, no, I really don't. Um, I think if a billionaire or maybe a future trillionaire wants to self-invest on that project, I'm not gonna object what they do with their own money but I don't think it's a productive way to spend your money. <laughs> so if you look out like 500 years from now, uh, you would be perfectly happy with humanity only being on the earth. Um, as long as there's no problem with humanity being on earth, I, get, I don't have a problem with us staying on earth. I still believe that um, we need to definitely increase our funding for NASA and other space programs so that we can learn more about the universe. Um, because we obviously don't know everything. Like there could be some phenomena that we'll learn about in a month or a year that we wouldn't have known if we didn't invest in it. Um, which I think that's important, learning about that. But I think we know enough about our solar system that we don't need to invest um a lot of mo more money and like projects like that but if something turns up and we realize that we were like potentially like extremely wrong about something like maybe jupiter is a solid like <laughs> and it's not a majority gas like then i think we really need to put some money in and figure out where we're going wrong and where we're wrong about other things um, and what do you think about the threat of uh, meteors hitting the Earth and that impacting our life down here? I have actually thought about this before. I think that an uh, asteroid has killed all, well, all the dinosaurs or, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. And I think that we definitely should have money investing in potentially like rockets or something that could be used to just destroy or nullify a threat before um, from space before it could have a catastrophic amount of damage. I think we definitely should invest in that. 
And, um, you know, one issue with meteors that hit the Earth is, you know, it'd be nice to know kind of like the frequency of which meteors hit the Earth, what their sizes are, what they're made out of, you know, they kind of have a good historical context of uh, what is the true environment that we have lived in, in terms of meteors, and mm -hmm. to try to use that information to understand what the likely future uh, frequency of such things are. But mm -hmm. one problem with studying that on Earth is the majority of meteors burn up in the Earth's atmosphere, which is good. Right, the ones right. that do hit the Earth usually land in the ocean because the Pacific is more than 50% of the Earth's surface. Right. The ones that do land on land, um, they may be able to be inspected for a few decades or what have you, but then you have weathering and you have the environment kind of um, causing uh, the, the meteor to um, essentially disappear from, from our thing. But the moon has been traveling with the earth in the exact same environment, and it has no atmosphere, so nothing burns up in its atmosphere. It has no weather, so everything on the surface is uh, still there. And it's like this record of all these meteor impacts. And, you know, we can go and see how frequent are they, what are they made out of, what are their sizes. And I, I was just wondering um, what kind of value would you place on, on finding uh, out more about that? I think that is important to know about now that you mentioned um because it does help kind of give us a little encyclopedia and all the meteors and asteroids that have come close to hitting earth um and it also helps give us an a general idea of what could potentially hit earth in the future um so i think with further interest in going back to the moon i think and also an increasing interest should be in like gathering data just like that from the moon. And have you ever heard of rare earth metals? I've heard of them. I honestly don't know that much. I don't exactly know that much about them either, but I know they're very vital to um, a lot of our high-tech equipment, you know, our electronics and mm -hmm. other high-tech equipment. And also know that the the deposits of them that we found are largely in China, like there's no other place to get them. And I also know that they're actually not from Earth, like these rare Earth metals are actually from meteor impacts. And so the idea is that there could be potentially an abundance of them on the moon. And I was wondering um, what you thought about uh, being able to go up there, extract these materials to support our um, technology development yeah like every year technology gets just more and more advanced um and i think like i said with the research on the moon i think that before we send astronauts to the moon we should work on get in like engineering new devices and technologies so that when we bring people back to the moon they'll be able to potentially extract this such things and bring them back safely um because obviously we have a finite amount of materials so it would be helpful yeah and what do you think about the sun like the risk of solar flares and changes in solar radiation and things like that uh but how important do you think that is to kind of look into I think it's important that we should do more research on the sun, like solar flares and effects and potential ways to stop a, um, a big solar flare from hitting Earth and going through the atmosphere. Because if I'm right, um, like if a solar flare or something of the matter like hit Earth and affected it, obviously I think it would have a tremendous effect since we're very like reliant on, on technology and how it would probably be down. Most technologies would be. And um that would be a disaster on Earth because I like unless you're isolated in the woods, I think we we all use some form of technology every day. Um and a solar flare would be devastating 
to civilization as we know it. And that's why I think that we should definitely research and try to have solutions in case something like that happens. And uh, did you know that Jeff Bezos has a space company? I've actually, yes, I've heard a little bit about it. Um, I honestly don't know much about it. I was watching a documentary in school about Jeff Bezos. And one of the last things that they briefly mentioned is that he does have a space company. Yeah, it's called Blue Origin. And Jeff has a little different vision than Elon Musk. So Elon Musk is committed to that city on Mars. Jeff mm -hmm. is like, um, you know, we've sent probes every place in the solar system and the mm -hmm. earth is the absolutely best place. There's no place that's even close to the earth. Mm -hmm. And he wants to use uh, space as a way to take all the mining, heavy industrial stuff, heavy manufacturing, and move that out into space. And if you could just, you know, maybe forget about what it would actually require to do that. Um, once doing that, you know, he would like to make Earth mainly, you know, residential and a, um, a reserve for nature and I was just wondering what you thought of that vision in terms of uh, space. I think that's interesting. I think it would be a good use of money um, and a very good investment if we were able to extract the resources from other planets and space things um, and bring them to Earth, Earth for our use. That would be good. Um, like I don't it would obviously require a lot of work um but I think I don't I definitely don't think that would go in Elon's timeline of 2050 but I think in the future in like maybe multiple decades we could definitely have that conversation yeah because uh, there's been some research done by other people about potentially using materials on the moon to manufacture solar panels. And then you could essentially um, put them into Earth orbit in like a, um, an orbit so they would always be facing the sun and then beam down the power using microwaves to the Earth. Um, you know, and then that way you don't have to, you don't have to burn coal, you don't have to burn gas, you don't have to dam up um, rivers. Um, uh, and I was just wondering what you thought of of that, if you thought that would be something. I've worth... actually um, heard of that. There's this YouTuber, and he did mention that. Um, and at the time, I was thinking, wow, that is great, but I don't know if that's going to happen anytime soon. I don't think that's going to happen in my lifetime, not even, like, my grandchildren's lifetime. <laughs> but I think that is definitely the future, and to harness the energy from the sun, I think it would be great to be able to use it for something like that. Oh, wait, also my phone is about to die. I'm just gonna, my charger is right here. I'm just gonna grab it. Okay, cool. There, I think I should be fine. Okay. Well, cool. Um, so you don't think it's gonna happen in your lifetime. Why is that? I think that it's not gonna happen in my lifetime just because just, I think that technology, I feel personally that it may be too advanced right now. Um, I do believe that if we were able to create something like that, um, that it would be great. And obviously, I definitely support that. But I, I just personally feel that we're not advanced enough to create something like that. Uh, what would it take for us to become events enough? Like, what are the steps? I do think that to become more advanced enough, we definitely need way more funding um, for space and space work and like other stuff regarding space. Uh, just to get to that point, I really don't think that um, we have, there's nearly enough funding. Um, I feel like already, like um, NASA and other organizations regarding that topic, don't 
having a lot of funding but i think that now um people i think that people are getting more serious about it space and i think that it, once um I, a majority of the population i feel like takes this this serial seriously and that to think about the future that we could do this that as long as we just put our minds to it i feel like once the majority of i'd say maybe the u.s um, is ready for that i think that then we can start getting to the point that we're progressing to that future i just wonder though if funding is really what's missing because if you think about tesla and the you know the high performing electric cars that they have that have mm -hmm. the autonomous freeway driving Right. Uh, you know, that didn't really come from government funding. That came from one guy that's like, hey, it could happen. I'm going to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And that same guy is like, hey, you know, it's dumb for us to build rockets and throw them away. We should build rockets and reuse them. Mm -hmm. And he like believed that. And the same guy is like making that happen. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, um, he's also working on building tunnels to kind of alleviate uh, traffic. And he's also working on a, a human computer interface that will allow for your brain to talk directly to a computer called a neural link. And he's like creating a, a worldwide network of high speed internet from satellites. And this is all like, you know, being, I mean, he has companies of thousands of people, I mean, you know, people, thousands of people work there, mm -hmm. but he's sort of, it's like um, the amount of money that he is uh, able to control, it's such a small fraction compared to what we've spent on so many things, but yet mm -hmm. he's been able to deliver so much more. And right. so it seems to me that if you took all the money that he had and you gave it to somebody, you wouldn't even end up with one of those things. And I was uh -huh. just wondering if you thought uh, that, if you agreed with that or if you thought, um, if you gave that money to somebody, they, they would actually be able to do all that. No, I definitely agree um, with that because I feel like a lot of great businessmen, entrepreneurs, if you gave them the same amount of money that Elon Musk has invested in his projects, a majority of them would not be able to come close to what he's achieved. I agree. It really, all, it really depends on who's doing it, like the passion and the drive to actually get to that end goal. Um, Elon Musk has clearly shown his passion for all of these projects of his. Um, and he's also shown a great amount of success too. So yeah, I definitely agree with that. And it feels to me that the difference between that and, and not that is having a vision for what's possible and then basically say, I'm going to get there regardless of whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. And if that's what it, if that's what allows for us to improve the world and change things, how do, how do we get more people to kind of um, make that same assessment uh, mm -hmm. in the, you know, in terms of the world that I know that it's possible for us to stop polluting the earth and for us to generate all the power from uh, solar power. And then they go off and they actually create an organization that makes it happen, you know, or I, I, I know that uh, the universe is a, a wonderful place and I think humanity should be out there. And they go out there and they actually create a way to, to make it happen. I, I guess, how, how, do we, how do we do that? On, um, I'm not sure, oh, to be honest with you, that's a, great that would be a great feat to be achieved um i think maybe if we can produce as a civilization more brilliant minds that are passionate about the future and what could be the future um such as elon musk maybe an emphasis on potential like stem studies in elementary school to like to ingrain and produce that passion for science and stuff like that. I think that would be a good start. Oh, what most excites you about the future? Um, 
I think what excites me the most about the future is how it could affect me. Like, I am very interested in Tesla. Um, I already tell my parents that when I'm out of college, I'm going to get myself a Tesla um, because I think the future of Tesla is going to be great. Um, oh man, I sound like, I feel like I'm sounding like Donald Trump. <laughs> but I think that if you just think about it, like, with a specific talking about Tesla, like, it's autonomous driving. It's obviously taking out the burden of being afraid of making my own mistake and also having to rely on the computer or what on the software. Um, but at the same time, not just the autonomous driving, it's also reducing carbon emissions because it's an electric car. Um, and they also, the apparently Elon Musk, well, my friend told me that apparently he's Tesla is apparently considering in the future having like solar panels or something on cars to even not need a charger or a supercharger or something like that i thought that was an interesting thing um because i know that elon musk also has a solar panel company i think it was called solar city or something but i also know tesla has their own solar panels and i think that would be cool because going back to the question just the thought of how it affects my life in a positive way that's kind of what excites me about these projects in the future. Yeah, Solar City uh, was actually ran by um, Elon's brother, Kimball. And I think a couple of years ago, uh, uh, Tesla bought out Solar City. So now they're they're one company. So got it. That makes sense. Um, what do you think the ideal life looks like in terms of how would you change society to to be better? Like what what would your ideal like city house society look like um definitely we need to cut down on pollution and on our carbon emissions just to all all just the little things to start with to help like earth overall it will definitely make an effect um definitely starting with is have trying to have a majority of electric cars and phasing out um, carbon, well, cars with significant carbon emissions. I think that with um, continuing advances and a lot of big car companies now that like Honda, Toyota, all of these well-known companies, they're starting to um, produce very good and productive electric vehicles. And I think if we can normalize electric vehicles and just instead of calling them electric vehicles in the future if they're just regular cars and regular trucks and stuff and if we can with increase the legislature uh, and phase them out completely maybe by 2050 let's i think or maybe 2060 um and completely get rid of that that will definitely reduce our carbon footprint um significantly and I think that's a good place to start off. But yeah. And um, let's see, if it was safe and affordable, would you have any interest in going into space yourself? I think that it would be cool to go into space. If it was affordable, I, but can you be more specific? Like, would it be would I be going to space commercially or like uh, how about just uh in orbit for a week um like getting to see the earth and kind of like a like vacation that. almost like a vacation okay well if it was affordable um I definitely consider it it would be a very interesting experience and if it was safe I'd also definitely consider it even more because like we've like we've both seen like videos of rockets not like making it you know and like exploding and such things like that and that is kind of the fear that i think most people um tag along with commercial spacecraft because people are like oh what if i'm in that 
spacecraft, you know, like what if I'm in the rocket and it explodes, like that sucks. Um, I think that if we can eliminate that aspect out of the equation and also add affordability, I think a lot of people would consider it. Yeah, I definitely uh, would like to go someday myself, but I'm also kind of afraid of, I mean, I don't like roller coasters, so. Oh yeah, me either. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so like being on the top of a rocket and going, you know, feeling like three times my body weight, uh, that's mm. that's going to be, um, be kind of that difficult. Would, yeah. <laughs> like I can barely go on like the little kid roller coaster. So I'm not sure if I'm capable of going in a rocket, but we'll but there see. were some uh, thoughts of building a space elevator where you take like this mass and you put it right outside of a geosynchronous orbit on the equator. And you have this long ribbon that goes all the way down to the surface. And then you have like this little thing that crawls up the, the ribbon and takes you into space. Um, but what do you think <laughs> about that? Um, I, I don't know how productive that would be, honestly. Well, I think it would require a great, great amount of time to get from one place to the other, um, assuming that we're not going at like the speed of sound um, to get to our location. But I think ideas like that are a great step um, in what could be the future. Well, that's awesome. I really appreciate your time, Samay. Mm -hmm. And was there anything, any topic that you wanted to cover that we didn't get to touch on? No, honestly, I think we covered everything I've thought about. You, you've mentioned things that I didn't even think you'd mentioned. So I think I don't th have anything else to input unless you have something. <laughs> no, that's it. I've, I'll go ahead and stop the recording. Okay, great.